Hi, all of you awesome scuba divers out there, welcome to Scuba Dive Magazine, your favorite place for the latest scuba diving news and gear reviews. Today, we're building a lightweight backplate and wing setup for ladies using Techline gear. So this is one reason why I'm loving Techline gear right now is that you can buy you can buy all of the parts separately and then just assemble them yourself or you can buy them in several sets and unlike recreational bcds where you just choose like the right size and you might get a choice of color in backplate and wing setups you can, you can mix and match the harness if you don't want this particular harness you can swap it out and it's still a fully functional bcd uh, the back plate you can swap that out for different a uh, different back plate with different characteristics and the wing itself to create a complete buoyancy system that suits you perfectly so in this instance, I'm building like a, a travel wing for someone diving single cylinders and a female diver specifically. So I have the Comfort Lady Harness, which is shaped more for a female figure, has some extra padding on the shoulders because if you're traveling, then you're hopefully diving somewhere in nice warm waters where you're less likely to have thicker neoprene to like pad your shoulders. Now, I wanted something lightweight for travel and you do have a few choices here and I could have gone for just a simple aluminium backplate, uh, but I decided to go for something shiny and I picked out the carbon fiber backplate uh, that weighs in a shade over 500 grams, about 508 grams. Uh, that actually makes it the lightest part of the entire set, but still nice and strong and that good foundation to attach everything else to. For the wing, I have Techline's peanut wing, uh, which I've already done an unboxing video for and a closer look uh, up here if you want to watch that, uh, see exactly what comes with it and how it arrives and all that. Um, but otherwise, yeah, for a single cylinder wing, uh, smart, asymmetrical design, all that, watch the video. And other than that, uh, other than the harness, the back plate, um, I've got a carbon fiber single tank adapter just to match the front, add a bit of stability for your cylinder so it's not rolling around a bit so much. Uh, you can go ultra lightweight, skip the single tank adapter, because you do have these ventral slots in your uh, in your back plate, so you can thread the Kanban straight through that. Um, but for something with a bit more rigidity, so your cylinder doesn't feel like it's like rocking and rolling on your back, uh, you can have a single tank adapter. Uh, so let's see how kind of all these bits and bobs arrive, um, because the harness itself comes in a few separate pieces. Uh, so let's all assemble it together and build ourselves a BCD. Okay, so let's put this harness together. Uh, now you're gonna need two things. You're gonna need your back plate and you're gonna need all of the, the parts of the harness that come with it. Um, full disclosure, I'm feeling a bit rough today. So if this section gets a little bit chopped up because I need to cough, uh, I do apologize for that. I'll try and keep it down as much as I can. Um, okay, it does come with an instruction manual. Uh, I'll be brutally honest. Uh, it did confuse me a bit more than it helped me. Um, but by all means, there is a step-by-step -step guide, um, but I did have to think a little bit outside of the, uh, the instruction manual to, uh, to be able to, uh, to assemble it uh, securely. So uh, looking at some of the parts, so these you'll find um, a whole bunch of these little like elastic loops. This is like in a tubing. And this is for basically keeping things neat and tidy where you might have uh, a bit of excess like two inch webbing. Instead of having it flapping around, um, we all know how much I hate flappy snag has is, um, you, you basically thread that over the two inch webbing wherever it's folding over itself to keep any excess like tails or loose sections from flapping around. Um, that, that's what they are for. And also for tools, as well uh, you'll you'll have a couple on the uh, the lower section of your shoulder straps so if you have a dive torch and it's clipped off onto a d-ring and instead of that just dangling around when you're in the water you tuck it underneath one of these to really like secure it in place so it moves with you and it doesn't dangle okay uh, you also get a whole bunch of these uh, these I call them tri gliders uh, other companies call them different things. Personally, I just always called them tri-gliders because they've got three. Uh, these are usually for mounting D-rings onto two-inch webbing and also for securing 
webbing from sliding and moving around. Uh, so we'll have a few of those in key locations, but whenever I say tri-glider, I mean one of these. Uh, otherwise, uh, yeah, let's get started. So the first piece, that you need is this two inch wide webbing, uh, a short section with a hole kind of melted into the, the middle of it. Uh, now the, the hole isn't smack dab in the middle of the, uh, the webbing, that's on purpose, uh, it's to line up with this, uh, this hole in the back of your back plate. Always have it, uh, or sorry, at this point, have the back plate facing downwards so it's raised up out of the uh, the workbench whatever you're working with and you want to make sure that the webbing is going to thread through these diagonal slots and when it does so that hole is going to line up with the hole in your back plate if you do it the other way around you can see it's not going to line up so it's, you're going to have to stretch the webbing which isn't good so it goes that way around and we're just going to slot it through the diagonal slots first, uh, going upwards because this is the start of our shoulder straps. Just line up that hole. And there we go, that's step one done. Step two, get the right hand shoulder strap. So uh, the, the easiest way to find out is the left hand shoulder strap has this little uh, corrugated hose retainer. So it's just a bungee loop just to keep your corrugated hose in place. So that's the left and it curves like away from your hips. This one on the other hand doesn't have one of those uh, corrugated hose retainers. This is your right hand shoulder strap and you've got the bottom which has two D-rings on it. Uh, one is a pre-bent D-ring to attach things onto. The other one is also to attach things, but it's also a bit of your quick adjust strap. The top has this loose section of two inch webbing. Uh, and obviously you can read the, um, the text that's on it um, when it's upright. So that is going up here. And underneath this section of two inch webbing, if you flip that over, you find this little section of like elastic um, webbing. So we're gonna thread the original section of, um, uh, of two inch webbing underneath that. And then you keep going and then thread the original section back through the back plate to kind of hold it in place. Now that isn't enough to properly hold it in place. Next, we take the um, this loose section of two inch webbing from the, uh, the shoulder strap assembly, take a tri-glider, and we're gonna thread it onto that section. Because that's what's gonna be securing the shoulder strap in place. Try and get it as close to, um, uh, to where this section of the harness begins. And then you thread it you basically follow the original strap. Give yourself a little bit of wiggle room. And then we're gonna thread it back through this tri-glider and lock it in place. So thread that section through the tri-glider and you can actually go underneath this section of nylon. And once that's done, you have this extra little tag. Uh, you can thread this ideally through that tri-glider just to give it a bit of extra strength and then tuck it in again underneath this um, section to, to really hide it away. So that's a really strong coupling, mainly using that tri-glider. But yeah, just tuck it in underneath there so that it's all neat and tidy. Now what that does, if I flip it over quickly, is because you did that original section of bungee, you've got this padded section like right between you and the, the back plate and the harness and all of that. So you do have that softer material, so it's not digging in quite so much. Uh, but 
it's a really strong and secure fitting so uh, so the shoulder strap is really mounted onto the back plate now we move over to the left hand side and it's pretty much exactly the same uh, you have the the two sections of two inch webbing you find the elastic loop first thread the section of webbing that's already attached onto the back plate through there first slide it down until it meets the back plate double that back through get yourself a tri glider and fit it onto the new section of two inch webbing give yourself a little bit of space so you can thread uh, some of that webbing strap through there give it a bit of a tug and then we're threading that through the back plate so now the shoulder strap is really attached onto the back plate and then lock it off with that tri glider and tidy it up by tucking away any of that excess two inch webbing strap finish off the loose section of the um the, the original like back the first section of two inch webbing tuck that through the uh, the tri glider just to lock it in place uh, and then you can tuck it in underneath that um uh, that section of the shoulder strap just to keep things neat and tidy you don't have to but cosmetically it's just a little bit nicer isn't it now that we tidied up the uh, the shoulder assembly or the top shoulder assembly, we're going to move down to the lower shoulder assembly and where it becomes the waistband. So lay your harness nice and flat. I just find it easy to make it as flat and easy as, as possible and get one of the straps. We're only going to do one of these at a time. Uh, find the, the neat section, um, unless you particularly want that on the outside. Uh, find the neat flat side of the, uh, the shoulder strap, the quick adjust section, and follow that to the end. And we're basically going to pass it through, up through the rectangular D-ring, loop it around the bar in the actual D-ring, and then back through both of them. So it kind of looks like that. So it comes through the horizontal D-ring, just the rectangle, around that middle bar, and then back through both of them. And that way it's quick adjust. So when you pull on the outer section, it should loosen. But if you pull on the other section, it should tighten. Um, so that's exactly what from your shoulder strap. Uh, you can then feed as much or all of the um, uh, that strap because this is now going to become your uh, your waistband but that's still quick adjust and it should look something like that okay on the other side uh, up through that rectangle through the main rounded section of the d-ring and then back through both of those rectangular sections Now I usually put one or two of these little um, uh, inner tubings over the uh, this section of the shoulder strap so that if you're using tools uh, you can tuck them away. I wouldn't put them all the way up to the top uh, because they'll get caught in that mechanism uh, but just like a third of the way down the strap uh, it shouldn't matter which way up they're facing. Um, they're, they don't have any logo or branding on it. Uh, but yeah, just thread one or two onto each of them. You get one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, so that should be enough to, uh, to have two on each. But um, you, you can buy these, you can make them yourself. Um, they're pretty easy to, uh, to replace. Uh, it just replies a little bit of um, unthreading and re-threading of your harness, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, they are handy to have. And yeah, it is just so that if you do have a torch, you can tuck it in underneath that and it just holds it in place. It's obviously uh, clipped onto the D-ring, but the torch itself stays in place and it doesn't dangle uh, whilst you're in the water. So now turning it into the waistband, 
follow it so you get this internal line going through these two parallel slots on the back plate. Flip it over and now we're gonna attach a tri-glider onto this. So thread it up through the first section like that and then back through here. Now on the left hand side, that's why I put a D-ring to attach your, uh, your submersible pressure gauge. So you want another tri-glider. Again, slide it up through one side, put the, uh, the D-ring onto there so it sits in the middle and then back down onto there so the D-ring's on the outside. You can rearrange where it's gonna be precisely uh, later on when you're trying it on for size. Uh, but yeah, just put it somewhere as a, a placeholder. Uh, then we're gonna have another one of these little uh, inner tubings uh, because this is going to tidy up where you're going to attach the uh, the quick release buckle for your waistband. Now we move on to our quick release buckle, the uh, the weight buckle going on the left hand side always, it's left hand release. Um, again flatten everything out, make yourself as, uh, as easy uh, as possible. On the quick release buckle you've got three slots, uh, the one on the end is wider ever so slightly wider, that's because it's gonna pass through that twice, whereas it only passes through the uh, the other two a single time. And it basically, from underneath, go up through that first slot, skip the middle one, go into the, uh, the farthest one going downwards, and then you're gonna loop through that middle one and then back out through the, uh, the wider one. This one can get a little bit fiddly, uh, so try and give yourself as much slack as possible, as much uh, sort of breathing space as possible. Pass it up through that middle one, and then follow it around so it passes back down through there, and then you can pull it tight. It'll obviously need a little bit of adjusting, um, but once you have adjusted it for the perfect size, then you can use that section of inner tubing just to tuck that bit of two inch webbing so it's nice and neat and it doesn't flap around anywhere. Now we move on to the right hand side, uh, which is a lot easier. Find your strap. Make sure that inner tubing is nice and high. Pass it through the webbing on the inside slot. You then have your, um, uh, your tri-glider. Pass that back through. Exactly the same as the left-hand side. And that's it really, the right-hand side is just a simple single piece of webbing and that passes through that quick release buckle. Uh, now we're moving on to the crotch strap. So take a look at the, uh, the crotch strap. And again, it has two ends. One end has a sewn in loop and that will go over your waistband and it has a fixed D ring on there. So you can attach your DPV or whatever. Uh, on the other end, it just, is loose two inch webbing, uh, but it does have a, a D-ring fitted to it. Uh, now, I typically fit another one of these, uh, normally on this side of the uh, of the D-ring. Now they do stretch. Uh, I'm gonna see quickly if it's gonna stretch over that, uh, that D-ring, because these are quite tough, these, um, uh, these inner tube sections. But they do have a bit of stretch in them. Otherwise, I just take the D-ring and the tri-glider off. It's not that hard. They'll stretch over. Okay, it's just because you're gonna thread this back through that tri-glider and then you're gonna have the loose end. Uh, so it's nice just to have it um, just tucked away. Uh, you still have two spare, or I still have two spare, so you can fit an extra one on each shoulder strap. It's nice to have a bit of redundancy. Right, and then, 
again, just flatten it out. We're going through this lowest slot down in the center of the, uh, of the back plate, and we're going underneath the, the back section uh, and coming forwards. And you just create a loop and then give yourself a bit of slack with this D-ring. And similar to the, uh, the quick release buckle, you're kind of doing it an inside loop inside of the tri-glider and then back down, making sure you go around that, uh, that D-ring and then just pull it tight. So it looks something like that. Uh, and, uh, and just tuck it underneath the, uh, the retainer and that's pretty much it. Uh, you just need to do a little bit of adjustment, trying it on, making sure everything fits and, uh, and just adjusting trimming. Um, because it's quick release, you shouldn't have to, uh, to trim too much, uh, but especially with the crotch strap, it's nice to have the D-ring in the right place and the crotch strap the right length and, uh, and just little adjustments here and there just to make it like your harness um, with that, uh, that D-ring on the left hand hip, you kind of want it straight down your um, uh, your outermost section, wherever the seam on your shirt is, uh, is usually a good indicator. So it's like right on the outside, it's really easy to find and, and clip onto that. Um, otherwise, yeah, just, um, just spend a bit of time with it. Um, just, yeah, really just adjusting it, trying it on in what you're actually going to be wearing. So if you're wearing a dry suit and undersuit, yeah, it is going to get hot, especially if you're doing that in the in the summertime. But yeah, put it all on, put that on, and uh, and do some adjusting. And um, eh, that's why it's useful to do this with a friend because they can see. Um, usually, a piece of chalk is quite handy to have as well, so that you can physically mark locations. Okay, you need to take this much off the. Um, the Techline webbing is quite nice because it has the little Techline three stripe logo on it. Uh, so they're quite nice little markers actually sewn into the webbing. Usually I'm not a fan of webbing with like branding on it. I find it is a bit much. I prefer just standard um, webbing, but the Techline logo really does, it's nice and subtle. Uh, they haven't gone too obvious. And, uh, and yeah, the, the three stripes are probably quite useful to, um, uh, for adjusting harnesses. Um, but yeah, let's attach the, um, uh, the wing itself and your single tank adapter. So now we have our wing bladder, uh, obviously make sure it's the right way round. Uh, the like flat section is the bit that goes against your back. So that's where your back plate is going to go. Uh, on the other side, th there's a bit more detailing to it. Uh, that's where your, your single tank adapter is going to go. It's going to take a, um, quick look at the hardware on the single tank adapter uh, because it may not be um, like assembled for you. You may just get the, the hardware, these nuts and bolts uh, loose. Now there's several sections to it and the, the usual rule of thumb is that you don't want metal on metal. Um, just because different metals, when they're in salt water, they can, uh, I think it's like ionic welding or something, I forget the, uh, the exact term but they can effectively fuse together. So you don't want metal touching metal. Uh, so you have a lot of these like plastic washers. Uh, you'll have your, uh, your nut, or just a, a flat head. Uh, so a flat head screwdriver is quite handy. Um, several of these uh, plastic washers, you get a, a spring washer as well, just to add a bit of tension and then a wing nut. Uh, now the wing nut goes on the inside against your back, um, but don't worry because it's recessed, uh, it, it doesn't actually touch your back, it's, uh, it's not uncomfortable. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so basically undo your, uh, your wing nut if it is done up. Take the, uh, the spring washer off as well and one of the uh, the plastic washers and then on the outside so this is the cylinder side you're going to have one of your uh, your bolts with a uh, plastic washer just so the metal isn't pushing against the carbon fiber and then you're basically passing that up through i think it's ambidextrous by the looks of it uh, pass it through the grommet in your back plate and that will line up with one of the um, uh, the, the grommets in the uh, the back plate itself. Uh, which one you do it through is kind of up to you. That gives you a little bit of um, 
like adjustment for height, uh, but I typically go for the central one because that's the one that goes through the harness, so it's a bit more secure. And yeah, just line it up, pass it through, line it up with the other hole in your, uh, in your back plate, and then washer, spring washer, and a wing nut. Just hold it in place on the other side. And then do it up just finger tight. Uh, you don't have to go crazy with it, uh, especially at this point. Uh, and then repeat that for the, uh, for the lower section. Uh, plastic washer, spring washer, and then your wing nut again. So now that sandwiches all three components into one thing. Uh, your single tank adapter just gives the, uh, the cylinder a bit of a cradle to sit in. So it's not like wobbling side to side or twisting. Uh, you can, you might be able to see through here, uh, you do have those vertical slots through the wing and through your back plate, uh, but a single tank adapter just gives you a bit of added rigidity. Uh, you've got three vertical choices when it comes to your cam bands uh, which come with the uh, with the bladder and you can thread them through here and other than tucking your corrugated hose underneath that section of bungee you're pretty much good to go uh, yeah you'll need a little bit of adjustment um, you can obviously fine tune it really quickly with the adjustment straps uh, but there you have it. It's um, it's a little bit more fiddly compared to some of the uh, the other harness styles out there, but you get this added padding. Uh, you get the quick release, so it is a bit easier to uh, to adjust it on the go. Um, you don't have quick release buckles, uh, so you don't risk that failure point. Uh, you just have a, a really strong, secure metal um, sliding system, and um, yeah, you get yourself a backplate and harness wing. And then we have the Techline Women's Comfort or Ladies Comfort Harness uh, on a carbon fiber backplate, carbon fiber single tank adapter with a peanut wing um, fully assembled. Uh, now there were a couple of spares. Uh, so there were those two obviously, uh, which you can just put on the, the shoulder strap or just keep them as spares. It's quite handy to have a few of these knocking around because they do wear out over time. So you just replace them. Um, they also have these two, which I couldn't completely figure out what they were for. Uh, they're Velcro sections of, uh, of webbing. Now, the closest thing that I could think of is maybe to attach your backplate onto the wing without that single tank adapter, just to thread it through those Kanban slots. But you'd thread your Kanbans through them anyway, so that makes these a bit redundant. Um, otherwise, some kind of hose retainer, I couldn't quite figure it out. You get two of them, um, so if you know what they're for, uh, by all means, pop them down in the comment section under the uh, in, under the video. But otherwise, you have your uh, your new BCD and, uh, and everything that you require to go diving. Uh, you've got your pre-bent D-rings over your right and left hand shoulder. You've got the chest strap as well, so you can adjust that and unclip that if you need to a uh, padded shoulder as well so it's nice and comfortable uh, you got the little hose retainer for your corrugated hose to keep that in place quick adjust straps with stainless steel hardware as well so you've got something really strong and positive to grab hold of and adjust those shoulder straps and then Below that, it basically becomes a single piece harness where you have a, a traditional quick release weight buckle and, uh, and single piece. The um, uh, uh, the two inch webbing is quite a soft two inch webbing. So it's quite malleable, which is quite nice. It's not going to, um, because you get really stiff stuff, uh, which can dig in and be a bit uncomfortable, but when it's softer, it's a bit more comfortable. Um, the crotch strap as well, so that's gonna help prevent it from riding up. And the overall ergonomics of the uh, of the shoulder straps, yeah, they're specifically designed for female figures, so it's a bit more comfortable when you're in the water uh, and out of the water when you're carrying the weight of the cylinder on your shoulders. And, um, and yeah, paired up with a peanut wing, it gives you that nice uh, position, quite a high position in the water on the surface so that boat traffic can see you much more easily um, yeah it is just a, a good strong all-rounder uh, for more information 
I'll put links down in the description below to each of these bits um, so that you can uh, you can check them out. Uh, otherwise, yeah, head over to techlinediving.eu. That's their website where you can check out all them. They make everything from regulators to BCDs and torches and all sorts of fancy tech diving equipment. And remember to head over to our website, scubadivermag.com. Uh, check out all the awesome things that we do over there. Thank you for watching, everybody. And of course, safe diving.